How come when somebody else is laying out stuff like this, it looks so simple and so clean, but whenever you try to do it, it just doesn't look as good? Well, I've definitely been there before and let me tell you about five different things that you can do to make yours also look as good as the others. And it's very simple, it's something that I like to call brah. Are you ready to learn? Brah. Breathing room, repetition, articulation, alignment, and hierarchy. That's what I mean by the bra method. Now, you might be thinking, Sam, I've never heard that before. That is ridiculous. And maybe that's true, but it's just something that I use to help me memorize these things so that I can double check them and make any design look amazing. And I'm here to teach you guys to do the same thing. Okay guys, breathing room, what do I mean by this? Really, I'm talking about the spaces around the page, but also the spaces between your blocks or elements on the page. Now, you guys may have seen in contemporary design, white space or space that is left absolutely blank on the page really gives the page a sense of elegance and it also gives a break for readers to look at a single page itself. So if I were to give you guys an example right here, like there is a lot of stuff going on on this page. Now, all we have to do is give this page a little bit of love and let these elements do their own thing, right? And what I mean by that is if there's a very big wow picture on the left, let it do its thing. So make sure that your text is not overriding whatever's going on here. Maybe my text box is tiny. It, it just takes up a little fraction of this and I really want the image to stand out. And then three calls of text is a lot. Maybe we just get rid of one of them, showing your text a little bit, or maybe it could continue onto the next page. Make sure we're respecting the margins that we put on the page. So if I have a guide here and my margin is half an inch, Make sure we're respecting that and not going over it. And then again, a little bit too much text, delete some of that off. And then you can absolutely give this entire row its own white space. And maybe we want to respect this white space down here as well. So you can see that after just a simple modification, letting things breathe, letting images do its own thing, letting text be separated so that they're not overwhelming, you can have a very, very good design. Now there seems to be a growing sentiment that less is more and that's absolutely true with this first rule here. Okay, next one up is repetition. Repetition is something that everybody does and it's something that helps your eyes flow through the page and it gives a bit of a narrative to the page which is what you want when you want to tell a story through pictures and through words we lay out something on a magazine, on a poster, whatever it is. So repetition is one of the design methods that designers use a lot in order to create rhythm and flow on the page. So it's really helpful in guiding your viewers eyes throughout the page because it intuitively makes sense for one to follow another if they are formatted and if they look very similar. Now you don't have to just repeat the pictures on a page, you can do color, you can do different typefaces, you can repeat things and manipulate them so that they look not only cohesive, but you can also really lead the narrative on the page. So another example of this, if we look at this table of contents page, you can see that some things are off and my eyes is kind of going all over the place. So on this page, there's a couple of things we can do with repetition that'll make it a lot better. If we can make all of these images the exact same size, orient these graphics so that they are at the exact same spot. Perhaps it's on the bottom in the singular row over here. And also change the color of these texts so that they don't really fall out of line with the black and white images that are already on the page. Then we're repeating not only the color, the size of the actual pictures, but also where everything is. If we do all that, then maybe it can look something like this, where your eyes are guided through the left to the right of the page, and this part of the contents flow very nicely from left to right, and your eye knows exactly where to go, and everything is super crystal clear when you actually read this page. Hey everybody, uh, before we move on, I just wanna remind you guys that if you're trying to get any of the Adobe software, I have a affiliate link down in the description. For students, it's like $16.99, which is a 60% off the full price, and you get every single Adobe Suite software. If you guys make anything, uh, tag me on Instagram. It's at LYH Studio. Okay, the next one is articulation. And this one is fairly self-explanatory. Really, it's about ask yourself, does everything on the page actually read? Let me show you what I mean. So this is a, an example that we did for a previous layout on our video. And looking at this, it looks pretty good, but there are some elements on here that I feel like just doesn't read. And a lot of these things come down to color. 
Now you can see that the fashion, which is spelled in an edgy way, it is kind of popping out, but not as much as I would like. And especially the Henry Brown on the left here, it's not really popping out. I can't read that. So in order for all these elements to show, you need to consider whether or not you want to have any highlight colors, whether you want to have a little bit more contrast on the page. But the main point is you absolutely want everything to be its elements and to be articulated and so that it's legible. So if I were to counteract this problem on this page where everything just kind of blends in, I would go in and start adding in some colors. And so taking the part where there's not a lot of contrast, you can change this to a different color. You can even add a highlight color that'll really, really pop everything out. It may look something like this when we're done with it. You can see that I've added some red, I've added some black, and you can see now that each element on this page is a lot more in sync and a lot more articulated than what we had up above, which is a lot looser and just doesn't really work well in a cohesive unit. So again, articulation is really about having things clear and concise and nicely separated on the page so that they can act as their own element and your eye kind of knows where to jump from one thing to another. Okay, so alignment is perhaps one of the other intuitive ones. You wanna make sure that there is some sort of alignment on the page. Now, I'm not saying that you have to make everything into a square and make everything rectilinear. But what is very important to recognize is that things that are not aligned are very easy to pick up on the eyes. Now, maybe you've seen this, uh, your professor or your boss, where they see something because they have a more trained eye than some of us, they can see things right away. If things are not aligned, they can see it. And it really distracts people from what you're actually trying to show. So let me show you what I mean. Going into InDesign once again, I have this page that Everything looks pretty aligned, but the more you kind of look at it, the more you stare at it, you can probably see all the misalignments on the page as well, right? You can see them. Now, we can go ahead and align these pages. So if I scroll down, I can align them all. They look a little bit rigid. Um, and what I'm talking about is you don't actually have to make them super rigid. With alignment, all you really need is some type of rule on this page. So let me show you another example of this. So here I have all of the same type of layout. We have the page number, the title, and a short description, and maybe a picture. They look seemingly random, but somehow they look also very neat. And the trick to that is I have a guide set up. So really, there is a set distance between the three different columns on the page. But even where it's seemingly random that the 17 and the 56 are, they are actually aligned horizontally on the page. So if I draw a guide right here, you can see that these two actually align. Same thing with the 62 and 11. So again, all you need to do is have some sort of system, even amidst some sort of chaos, it'll look a lot more neat than if you just don't have things aligned the proper way. So for this one, it's really about having things aligned and if it's not aligned, it's really easy for people to see and that absolutely distracts them from what the actual content is, which is not what you want at all. The last tip we're gonna talk about is hierarchy and sticking with the theme of today's video, it's really about where your viewer's eyes go. And there's not really a better example to show you guys this than the portfolio that I made a video on a couple of videos ago. So if we take a look at this image itself, what do you guys think is the main thing that I want to show here? I feel like it's fairly obvious and that is the image. So if I really want people to focus on the image, then it makes sense for me to go two different spreads. And that's one of the techniques that you can actually use to make certain people focus on certain things. Now, just ask yourself, when you look at this image, what do you see first and what do you see next? And this is also very well illustrated on any type of resumes. So on resumes, you can only rely on text in order to convey your information. And so you have to organize your text so that they are in a coherent way, that they're not too cluttered and that people can read them and want to read them. And you do that by having hierarchy. We have titles, we have texts that are bold, we have texts that are lighter, texts that might not be a black, they might be gray. All of this to delineate and distinguish between the different elements that people can read and the elements that you want people to actually go over. So hierarchy is super important for emphasis as well as organization so that when people read whatever you're putting on here, there is a certain flow and there is a certain logic to it. 
So there it is, that is all five of the tips. And most of the times it's really good to see if all five of these are present on all of your pages. Now they usually work very well together. So check if you have you know, enough breathing room for all your text elements and your picture elements on the page. Check if repeating elements are reading well and there's a flow to where your eye goes. Check if there's a very clear hierarchy of where you should look first, where you should look next. Check if all your alignments are in place. If there are any that are super off, that might be the first thing that somebody might focus on, which will take away from what you're trying to do. And last but not least, make sure that you're articulating everything super well. Make sure that things are reading well and that the contrast makes things pop. And not everything is blurring into the background or you can't really make out what that says. Let me know which one you guys think was the most useful because to me, a lot of people don't really use the breathing room and as soon as they incorporate it into their layout, their layout gets 10 times better. So give that a try, let me know how it is. With that said, if you learned anything new, leave it in the description. Let me know what you learned. Click like and hit subscribe and share with your friends. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, which is a hefty goal, but I believe we can do it. Uh, but yeah, with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.